Hi there, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. I'm sorry, I've been away. Um, not to like PEI away, um, or from PEI away. Um, I needed to take a break, and we'll discuss that in a later episode. Or... You know what I mean. So, today is World Stroke Day. Um, so I figured I would make a video for two reasons. Uh, one, to celebrate, I have... I think as of today, 253 subscribers, and I would like to thank each and every one of you that has taken the time to subscribe to my channel, each and every one of you that has taken the time to watch my content, and each and every one of you that has taken the time to potentially have a conversation after watching some of my content. Uh, so I'm going to get back to a more regular same bat time, same bat channel sort of deal, and we'll just sort of see how that plays out. So let's just talk about World Stroke Day. So today is the 29th of October. Uh, it's currently 4.17 in the afternoon where I am in the province of Ontario in Canada. Um, and right now, uh, it's World Stroke Day. In other places of the world, it's now the next day. So a st stroke, very misunderstood. Um, so I'm just going to talk briefly about the province of Ontario and some of the impacts that stroke uh, can have. So stroke is the third leading cause of death and adult disability in the province of Ontario. Right? So out of every, you know, three people that die, one of you is going to be because of a stroke. For every three people that become disabled as an adult, that's because of a stroke. More women die than men from strokes. More women die from stroke than breast cancer. That I didn't know. And that's not to belittle or minimize the wickedness of breast cancer and what that can do to uh, an individual woman and her family that's despicable completely unconscionable however more women die from stroke than they do from breast cancer there are an estimated 25,500 new stroke events in Ontario right that result in 15,500 inpatient admissions every year so some of those strokes, again, you're going to have your stroke and die. So you don't get admitted to the hospital. And some of them are minor. They're like transient. So you don't actually have to be inpatient in the hospital for a long period of time. Every 30 minutes, there's a new stroke event in the province of Ontario. Every 30 minutes. Think about that. There's at least 48 strokes every day in the province of Ontario. 22% of Ontarians that have a stroke, that's approximately 55,000, sorry, 5,500, yeah, not 55,000, 5,500, they die within a year. So you have your stroke, and then within 12 months of having your stroke, you're dead. You know, And that's unfortunately just the reality of the situation. Now, for those that live with a stroke, uh, that is approximately a $1 billion industry per year. So for all of us in Ontario that live with the outcome of a stroke, the collectively, as a group, that's impacted our lives to $1 billion. Um, be that you need to pay for your own therapy. Uh, be that you need to buy uh, an assisted device, be that you need renovations to your vehicle to make it safe for you to drive, be that renovations to your home, be that loss of income, right? Um, people have to move because of you or you have to move to them, right? Uh, one in five residents in a long-term care facility has had a stroke. So go into any long-term healthcare facility um, and you may encounter someone like my grandmother's case who was in her 80s and she'd had a stroke and the only reason why at that point she was in a long-term care or slash nursing home was because of her stroke i myself at one point after my stroke was seriously considering checking myself into a nursing home for a brief period of time because i was having difficulties right um now in in canada as a whole stroke is the leading cause of adult disability right and the third and the third leading cause of death. Right? So 
in Canada, it's the leading cause of adult disability and the third leading cause of death. Uh, every year, roughly 14,000 Canadians die from a stroke. Right? In Canada, one stroke every 10 minutes. So by the time this video is done, two people in Canada statistically have had their stroke. Right? One every 10 minutes. You know, that's six an hour. About 300,000 Canadians live with the effects of stroke. Um, approximately 3 million days are spent in hospital every year because of a stroke. So if you take all the hospital days in all of Canada, 3 million hospital days in Canada are, are used because of stroke care. Right? Uh, stroke costs the Canadian economy about $3.6 billion a year in just physician services, hospital costs, um, low wages, decrease in productivity. Right? So $3.6 billion. That's, that's not a small amount of money. And that's across the entire country. And that covers, you know, your hospital costs, your physician visits. But that's not looking at things like you had to buy a cane or you had to buy um, a sleep apnea machine or you had to get medication that's not covered by your drug plan or you went over your drug plan's allotment for yearly medications. Uh, so you now are out of pocket to get more medications. Um, that's not including, you know, so many factors that, uh, you know, and I could go into some of my specifics, but I won't for the purposes of this video, because this video is really focusing on World Stroke Day. Right? Now, out of all the people that have a stroke, out of if you take 100 stroke people, stroke folk, we'll get into another video about choosing your own adjectives, um, 15 of those will die right off the hop. So 15% of 100 people that have a stroke will be dead within that day. Right? Um, and if they don't die immediately, there is a high likelihood of you'll be dead within 10 days. 40% uh, are left with moderate impairment, so 40 people. 10% um, are so severely disabled, they retire, require, retire, essentially, yeah, they do retire. They require long-term care. So think about it. You're 30, you have a stroke. The stroke is so negatively impacting, you never work again, right? You are now essentially retired. You are medically retired from working. Um, and that may require, um, you know, you living in a long-term care facility. That may require you living in a semi-independent group home. That may require you move back in with family and you are there for however long. Um, you have a worker of some kind that comes around. The last job I had in mental health was working with brain injury. Now, that being all of those people were traumatic. A uh, few were acquired, but the vast majority were traumatic brain injuries. And I was a rehab and therapy support worker. So I, I would spend like the entire day with people at times. In fact, I got to do grade seven and grade eight again because one of my uh, clients was in grade seven and then grade eight. So it's easier when you know the answers, but I wasn't there to get tested. 10%, uh, you know, are so severely impaired that they require long-term care. So if you're in your 65 and plus years, that's not such a bad thing per se, because you're already about to retire. Um, but We'll get into that. 25% or, or 25 people out of 100 recover with minor impairment or disability. I technically would consider myself in that crowd. Um, and we'll get into that in a later video, not for the purposes of discussion today. And 10% recover completely. Um, I have difficulty with the term recover completely. And again, that'll be topic for yet another video. <laughs> so... Right now, I'm at 9 minutes and 38 seconds. So in 20 seconds from now, someone statistically in the province of Ontario will have a stroke. Right? So just think about that. In the short period of time that you've been watching this video, someone's already had their stroke. Which would be right about now.
right? Someone just had a stroke. Now, let's talk about the biggest misconception. It's old people. Stroke folk or old folk, right? It, they've already got the dwindles, as an Irish doctor would say. They're already an octogenarian. They've already led an unwholesome, unnatural life. They've eaten all the bacons. They've consumed all the unhealthy fats. They've, you know, done all the things. Um, they've already, you know, breathed in the asbestos and played in cancerous materials. So the vast majority, you know, out of, out of all your stroke folk, right, 25% are under 65, right? So that means the vast majority are 65 or older. Well, the great thing about being over 65 is you probably already have at least one pre-existing condition, if not many pre-existing conditions. Um, the amount of damage you've already done to your body due to your pre-existing bad habits, pre-existing conditions, um, you know, are you simply a meditarian? Um, you know, and, and you consume a unnatural volume of bacon on a daily basis and the only thing that you consider a vegetable is relish or pickles right and that's all you eat is meat and pickles and meat and relish um well obviously you're not doing yourself any favors uh but then again let's consider that other 25 percent which would be hashtag not just the elderly um i was under 50 when i had my stroke I know of 30 year olds that have had strokes. I know of five year olds that have had strokes. I know that people younger than myself um, that have had strokes. And we're kind of in the stroke community, uh, we're kind of invisible in a, in a public sense. In the stroke community, we know we exist. Um, our partners, our family, people that know us, including Dave. Hi, Dave, you're an asshole. Um, uh, they know we exist. They see our interactions with the world and how the struggles progress. But not a lot of attention is spent on us. A couple of reasons, and I've done some videos on why stroke is considered an orphan disease and, and uh, stroke recovery timelines. The vast majority of stroke folk are over 65. The vast majority of stroke folk, they've already got a pre-existing condition. Their life has already got the dwindles because of the stroke. Statistically, they're going to be dead within five years. Um, you know, they uh, there's not a lot of research done. Uh, the research that is done is very, very specific. The research that is done can't find a cure because there is no cure. Um, there's no new drug that they can give you because any medical outcome you have with a stroke, there's already a drug that pre-exists. There's no new magical surgery they can do because the majority of the surgery they're going to do, they're going to do in the first two years anyways. Um, so all of us that are under 65, we kind of get ignored and, and that's in a couple of ways. So one, to look at me right now, you would never have any conceivable idea that one day, 28 months ago, my brain and I had an argument and it was a trying to kill me, right? Um, you would have no idea that this is October. 10 months ago would be January. So in January, I was still having some, some significant difficulties with mobility, that being balance and whatnot. And I live in Canada where there's winter and snow and ice, oh my. So the streets turn into like the outdoor slip and slide of death, which can also cause freezer burn. Um, so come March, I was able to be um, physically aware enough to start rucking or tabbing, putting on a rucksack, and, and eventually getting to 50 pounds, doing 10 kilometers and, and doing it at a healthy time. I'm typically under 11 minutes, 20 seconds, 11 minutes, 30 seconds per kilometer. So I'm, I'm able to do a fairly decent pace. Um, next year, I've got a new goal and that's to get a new rucksack. Uh, it has an external frame so I can go to 80 pounds or farther. But to look at me on a good day, you'd have no idea um, that I have expressive aphasia, I have anomia, apraxia of speech, also known as verbal apraxia, I have light sensitization, sound sensitization, I have PTSD, um, I have major depressive disorder, like there's a whole litany of things, foot drop, proprioception, balance, um, a bag of medication, um, you know, you'd have no idea to look at me that I have these problems. Um, I have a friend of mine over in the UK, hey Steve, 
Um, your gift should be there shortly, and I hope you don't enjoy it. I know you will, but that's okay. Um, you know, a friend of mine over in the UK, um, to look at him, you would know there is something going on because he still has some paralysis um, on his one side, and eventually that, that may or may not get better. Uh, recently, there's been a, a, a really healthy uptick on the, the it going to get better side. Um, I have another friend who has uh, tremors after their stroke. You know, I've and and these things are, are invisible, right? Um, you'd have no idea that these things exist uh, because statistically, it's your grandmother that has the stroke, your great uncle that has a stroke, you know, someone who's already retired from the working world and um, someone who's already got maybe other medical conditions. Uh, so a lot of people don't quite see the, uh, the negative side, so to speak. Right. So, um, so a lot of people, when they think stroke, they think, you know, the blue hair, cane brigade, um, dentures, you know, that's, that's what you think because by far and large, that's the reality, right? 75% of the reality. So I'm just going to sum up because we're at 16 minutes and 31 seconds. So just on World Stroke today, today, October 29th, just take a minute to think how your life might change if you were under 65 at your current age, whatever that is, and, and you were to have a massive, irrevocable, life-changing event where you have to do things like learn how to walk again, learn how to cut food again, learn how to tie shoes again, learn how to put socks on again, learn how to do some of the most simple, basic things again, right? And, and then think, think about, I have to do this for at least another 20 to 30 years before I hit 65. Food for thought. So on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching, and apparently 253 of you do like enough to, to subscribe. And I, again, I apologize for having been away for a while and I'll, I'll get into that in a, a later video and I will start a more regular uploading schedule. Um, if you'd like to me to make content on a specific issue, you can either reach me at Twitter, uh, Stroke Assaulter. It's actually Assault or Stroke, but you'll find me. You can find me on Instagram at Stroke Assaulter. You can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. You can leave a comment down below in the comment section down below. Uh, so if you happen to know someone that's either going through the recovery of a stroke or supporting a loved one or a friend, except for Dave, Dave, you don't get to leave comments, um, that's going through that of a stroke, um, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. Um, and again, if there's something you'd like me to cover, uh, please get in contact with me and I'll, I'll do the best I can to, uh, to make some content in that regard. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke, been a while, let's see if we can do this. Not being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance. Uh, someone who immediately uh, appears to have a vision problem. They see a one eye, they don't see in color, they can only see in grayscale. They see a little dot in the world, like they literally see just a little bit of the world. Um, someone who has facial droop, there's a visual noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, uh, inappropriate uh, language for a situation and context. Someone who can't understand speech. Um, uh, their answers aren't making sense to what you're saying or they keep saying, I don't understand you. Um, someone who uh, has general body weakness, weakness on one side or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.